Well, hello, good keyboard warriors from the future. You're probably here to either explore new keyboard options or simply get confirmation bias to a keyboard you already know. Come on, let's just be real. But remember, no keyboard will sound as bad as this one. So pingy and hollow, yikes. Sorry, Corsair. So here's my list of the best keyboards you can actually buy to satisfy the thonk. Ho, ho, ho. Mm -hmm. With of course, sensible categories like the best entry keyboards, the most unique options, the best small typing devices, my favorite full-size keeps, even though I'm not into full-size keyboards, and for those thick wallet lovers, the best value keyboards I've used as well. So let's start with the entry category, and Ducky makes it almost too easy to recommend the entire 1 to 3 series that is available in all flavor sizes, really unique colorways as you can see, and all types of special editions too. Ducky has really strong reputation for a reason. Excellent stabilizers that put any mainstream gaming keyboard to shame. No. Basically, their quality control for switches is fantastic, and who says you can't game in style, right? With a constant stream of new color options released to kind of spice up your set, so you don't have to think about you know, swapping keycaps or feeling FOMO of not building your own. Which brings us to the NK65 Entry Edition by Novel Keys. It's exactly what you'd want to start with if you have a choice of switches and the keycaps in mind and want like a really good quality base to start with while keeping your wallet thick. It's fairly affordable. It has sound dampening, USB-C, hot swappable switches, and how can you not buy something that these two awesome dudes recommend, you know? So yeah, Vermillo is another gem for keyboards, especially the entire 87 series. You can design or pick a keycap set with awesome switch options available with the looped stabilizers and a typing experience that is like on the next level if you're coming from a traditional gaming keyboard in the past. Don't sleep on Vermillo because the keyboards never sleep, remember, they have two shifts. Speaking of shifts, let's hear from today's video sponsor, shall we? You want performance, but what about portability? Well, that's where the new Razer Blade 15 comes into the equation. It harnesses NVIDIA's latest GeForce RTX 30 series laptop GPUs up to an RTX 3080, mind you. And with that kind of power, you can experience the best visuals and lowest latencies in gaming, thanks to ray tracing and all the hard work that the new RT cores, tensor cores, and AI enhancements perform behind the scenes. Oh, and did I mention the beautiful and fast display flavors that Razer offers, ranging from Full HD 360 Hertz up to 4K OLED. And all of this hardware goodness is wrapped in an anodized matte black chassis, and with their new anti-smudge coating, it won't show fingerprints. Check out the new Razer Blade 15 down below. Now, for my most unique keyboards, let's appreciate what Shuriki is doing with the Hanzo series. So not only do you get these insanely cool looking colorway options, but it's not just bling that is satisfying. They got everything else right with amazing stabs, two function knobs, a top plate you can remove to get this bare bones look that does not affect the typing experience. It even has Bluetooth support for wireless functionality. It pops up on mechanicalkeyboards.com, so keep checking to get your own Hanzo. And remember, it's not like the others, but it's QWERTY. The Wooding Lecker 2 HE would be my callout for analog movement lovers. The keyboard as you can see, it looks kind of basic, but there's so much tech built into the Lecker analog switches. First, you can adjust the actuation point in the largest range ever between 0.1 millimeters to four millimeters. There's an option called rapid trigger with dynamic reset points, so you don't have to go all the way up to reset the key. And DKS is actually pretty cool, letting you macro up to four functions on a single key press. And I go in depth with some gaming examples in my video right over here. How about the best modular keyboard on the market, the Everest Max by Mountain. It has more Type-C connectors than 2019 combined with a numpad that can be attached on either side of the keyboard or via a USB-C cable for some 
placement flexibility. We have this awesome gimmicky media dock that has actually a lot of functionality, magnetic angle feet, an actual USB 3 hub, and finally a gaming keyboard that doesn't sound like trash. Let's talk small when the size matters. The new Fanatic Streak 65 LP, my gosh, they did good. Its low profile DNA is basically in everything that is designed by this keyboard with now double shot PBT low profile keycaps, a coiled cable and switches that can only be described as smooth. They're smooth. <laughs> Nice. The stabs are awesome, the white model is gorgeous, and you know, when I introduced it to my M4 wireless, they just clicked. For some wireless action, the ROG Falchion is pretty sweet with a compact 65% layout and those half height uh, PBT Alien font keycaps. The side capacitive strip can adjust the volume and reveal battery status with up to 400 hours of battery life without any RGB and around 50 hours with the lighting on. I like the magnetic USB compartment and this keyboard cover for protective goodness while you travel. It all makes sense. Now the Mode 65 is very special in the small space too, because it is literally the best typing experience you can get. You know, if your life was like a credit card without a limit, the custom options are very cool, but this is a commitment as well, and truly a proper pleasure for your fingertips. So good. Going even smaller, look no further than the HyperX Alloy Origin 60. It's kind of the perfect small keyboard. The body has weight and aluminum density, so it doesn't slide around on the table. A removable USB-C cable, textured PBT keycaps, gorgeous illumination, and really clever arrow placement that is right in reach when you slide into the FN zone. The switches are nice and smooth, and stabs, to the most part, are great. I also love my Huntsman Mini with the Gen 2 linear switches by Razer because of the soft bottoming out and the really uh, satisfying silent profile if priority for you is being quiet. Nice. While in the TKL space, you already know my obsession with the X to 5K4 TKL, just a solid, simple keyboard with sound dampening on all the larger keys. And if you're looking for the fastest and the lightest switches, the original Razer Huntsman TE is still available with really smooth travel, as long as you don't mind the pinging that's happening if you fully bottom out. Gosh, it sounds terrible. Very hollow. The upgraded Huntsman doesn't have such smooth switches, but the sound profile is greatly improved, so that's also an option. Yikes. Now for those numpad lovers, let's talk full size. If I was forced to use one, I'd gravitate towards the ROG Claymore 2 with their new RX Optical Red Linear switches. Now, this is the most stable switch I've tried so far with really excellent density as you bottom out because of the X stabilizers, and they are just properly smooth without any scratchy characteristics. The detachable numpad is a huge bonus to free up some space on your mouse side while still keeping the numpad on the left. And also the keyboard is wireless for a few solid days of gaming. They are supposed to lube and upgrade the stabilizers after CES. So if you're buying one, make sure it's the later edition. We of course cannot go without mentioning the Corsair flagship, the K100. It is so over the top in its design and RGB. I kind of love it. It is the most RGB they've ever put on a keyboard. I know that from them. The build quality gives you confidence. The PBT keycaps uh, have excellent texture. There's a USB port for other peripherals and this multifunction IQ wheel that they call it, that has plenty of functionality, but it is kind of janky and gimmicky. At least the typing experience is much improved 
versus everything that Corsair has delivered in the past with decent stabilizers and great consistency throughout the board. For the best value-friendly keyboards, check out the Pulsar Lunar Alloy Series that is available in both full-size and TKL options, and really not a bad experience for only $59 with a solid aluminum top plate and this transparent base to reveal the red PCB. Double-shot ABS keycaps that are here are tough with a little texture and surprisingly not revealing any finger oil, so well done there. The switches are hot swappable, but only with other out emu switches, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but what impressed me the most are the very satisfying stabs for such a value keyboard and pretty sweet linear switches too that are fairly quiet. I mean, there's some noticeable pinging happening when you hammer away, but overall it's a pretty solid package with a standard bottom row. Uh, the cable is not removable, but it is very flexible, kind of like what you find on their mice. Uh, plus RGB on here is pretty vibrant. The more mainstream value keyboards come in form of the GMMK from Glorious, which is one of the better options and feature sets in the $100 category. And also let's not forget the entire range of HyperX alloy keyboards that is seriously impressive and is generally available from HyperX directly with solid reputation on their Aqua switches and their keyboards in general and also competitive prices. Now it's pretty awesome just how much variety was released over the last two years. So if you are picking something up, let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear what people are going to be using in 2022. And as Eber always says, spend responsibly, my good keyboard friends.